Following multiplication and division of rational expressions, we are now going to do adding and subtracting. Now, when we add or subtract fractions that are numerical fractions, we have to generate a common denominator. And the process that we go through for doing this is we take our denominators as they are given, so 8 and 10, and we have to find what the lowest common multiple is of those two numbers. So if I were to take 8, 8 is equal to 2 cubed. Then, if I were to take 10, I get 2 times 5. Now my lowest common multiple of these is what includes all pieces that are in there. So expanding out my 2 cubed, that's 2 times 2 times 2. So what is the minimum requirements needed in order to make a common denominator? Well, I have to have a 5. That takes care of this. And then I have to have 3 2's. That takes care of those three. Now, by doing that, I automatically took care of this two, so I met the requirements. So my lowest common multiple is two times two times two times five, which is equal to 40. Then, it's a matter of going through and seeing what is missing. Well, in the one eighth, the only part that is missing is the 5. So I will multiply this by 5 fifths, giving me 5 fortieths. Then what is needed in the 1 tenth is it only had 1 2 and it needs 3 of them. So I'm going to multiply it by 2 squared over 2 squared, the missing pieces. And that's going to give me four fortieths. So now that I have a common denominator, it just goes along for the ride, and I add, or if it was subtracting, subtract the numerators, giving me nine fortieths. So this is the method and process that we use, and we'll continue with this as we go into adding and subtracting rational expressions. The only difference is our lowest common denominators are going to be factored binomial or trinomial items. Let's take a look. So if I have x plus 1 divided by x minus 1 plus negative 2 divided by x squared minus 1, I need to find the lowest common denominator. So there's nothing I can do with the first denominator, but my second one I can factor a little bit. In both these I can factor out an x giving me x minus 1 as my resultant. As you can see, both denominators have an x minus 1. The first one, or sorry, the second one just has an extra x. So I then multiply the first fraction by that missing piece in the form of 1, so x divided by x, and that's going to give me x squared plus x over x times x minus 1 and to that I'm going to add negative 2 divided by x times x minus 1. Now my denominators are the same so they go along for the ride. I get x times x minus 1 and now for my numerators I have x squared plus x minus 2. This is the two items added together. Now just to make sure we have everything in the simplest form possible, we're going to check by trying to factor our numerator. Now this numerator is equal to x plus 2 times x minus 1, and we're dividing that by x times x minus 1, and lo and behold, both have an x minus 1 term in them, so that can be simplified out. And our final answer is x plus 2 divided by x, 
with the restrictions that x cannot equal 1 and x cannot equal 0. So we have now added <coughs> two rational expressions and come up with a final simplified form. A lot of steps going on here, a lot of things to keep track of, so let's do another one. We have x divided by x squared minus 4 plus 1 times x plus 2. Can't factor that second denominator, but the first one is x plus 2 times x minus 2. The second one has the first part, but doesn't have the second, so we're going to multiply it by x minus 2 over x minus 2, giving it that common denominator, and not changing it, because we multiplied by a form of 1. So I have x over x plus 2, x minus 2, plus, distributing, I get x minus 2 over x plus 2, x minus 2. Now, adding these items together, I get 2x minus 2 over x plus 2, x minus 2. And if I were to try and factor that numerator, I'd get 2 times x minus 1 divided by x plus 2 times x minus 2. That appears to be our most simplified form. We just put in our restrictions. x cannot equal plus or minus 2. And we now have our simplified fraction, our simplified rational expression. So for addition, it happens this way. Subtraction is going to happen with remembering to distribute our negative sign. So here's a couple of examples. Let's look at x plus 3 divided by x minus 2 minus 6x minus 7 divided by x squared minus 3x plus 2. While our first expression can't have anything happen, our second one is x minus 2 times x minus 1. So our first expression needs to be multiplied top and bottom, numerator and denominator, by x minus 1. That will give common denominator and at the same time not change the end value of what we had. So we're going to end up with x minus 1 x minus 1 times x minus 2 as our denominator with, we'll uh, distribute that numerator, I get x squared plus 2x minus 3, and from that I'm going to subtract 6x minus 7 over x minus 1, x minus 2. So we have a common denominator, it goes along for the ride, x minus 1, x minus 2, and our numerator, we simply distribute, x squared, or we combine like terms, x squared can't go with anything, uh, 2x minus 6x is a negative 4x, and then we have negative 3 minus a negative 7, so that becomes plus 4. Just to make sure we are completely finished, we're going to now factor this numerator. We get x minus 2 times x minus 2, and that is divided by x minus 1 times x minus 2. Now, as you can see, we have an x minus 2 term in both numerator and denominator, so we're going to simplify those away, making a value of 1. So our final answer is x minus 2 divided by x minus 1 with restrictions that x cannot equal 1 and x cannot equal 2. So again, a lot going on here. <coughs> Let's take a look at the second example that's shown. First, 
we have x minus 1 over x plus 5, and we're subtracting x plus 3 over x squared plus 6x plus 5. Let's factor that second denominator. It is x plus 5, x plus 1. Now our first uh, fraction has the x plus 5. It needs the x plus 1 portion of it. So that gives us x squared minus 1 divided by x plus 5, x plus 1. And from that we're subtracting x plus 3, which is also over x plus 5, x plus 1. Now combining like terms with that common denominator, put a divider line in here between my problems, I get x plus 5 times x plus 1. And now, x squared cannot be combined with anything. The negative 1 will combine with the 3, so negative 1 minus 3 is a negative 4. And then I have just a minus x in the middle. So now we need to see if we can factor that numerator. Are there any items that multiply to a negative 4 and add to a negative 1? The answer is no. So this is our final form. We put in our restrictions where x cannot equal 1, sorry, negative 1, and x cannot equal negative 5. So this is our final answer in the set. Adding and subtracting fractions, just a matter of finding like terms. Now with these, that involves factoring our quadratics and then multiplying out to form new quadratics and perhaps simplifying those. So one other item is important and needed when dealing with rational expressions and that's fractions. Now a complex fraction is where we have a fraction inside of a fraction. And what we have to do is the process we just did but we have to break it down even further. So the first thing we need to do in this first problem is find a common denominator of our denominators. We have x divided by x, uh, 1 over x plus 1 over y. So for this first set, I need to multiply by x over x for that second denominator in the denominator and y over y for that first one. That gives me x divided by y over xy plus x over xy. That then becomes x divided by x plus y over xy. So now we're dividing and I by a fraction, so that means we're going to multiply by its reciprocal. So that becomes x over 1 times x over y divided by x plus y. So our common denominator is going to actually be this x plus y portion. So I'm going to multiply my first one by x plus y over x plus y. That then becomes x squared plus xy, all being multiplied by xy, and all that is divided by x plus y. So now, mul distributing my numerator, I get x cubed plus x squared y squared all divided by x plus y with restrictions that x cannot equal 0 and y cannot equal 0. As you can see there's a lot going on with this that's why we call it a complex fraction. Let's take a look at the second one just to make sure we have it down. So now we have to do that same process, numerator and denominator. For our numerator, I need to multiply the first one by x plus 1 
over x plus 1. Second one, I need to multiply by x over x. That will give me, I have x squared uh, minus x minus 2 over x times x plus 1 plus 2x over x times x plus 1. All that's being divided by, now for our denominator, I need to multiply the first one by x plus 1 over x plus 1. The second one by x minus 1 over x minus 1. So that will give me a 3x plus 3 over x plus 1, x minus 1, minus x minus 1, distributing that 1, over x plus 1, x minus 1. So now simplifying my, call it a super numerator, we can't combine the x squareds with anything, but negative 2x plus, oh, sorry, negative x plus 2x is a positive x minus 2 over x times x plus 1. We're dividing that, our super denominator, we have 3x minus x, which is 2x. We have 3 minus a negative 1, which is 4, divided by x plus 1 x minus 1. Now we're dividing a fraction by a fraction so I'm going to do two things here. I'm going to start by factoring the supernumerator. We have x squared plus x minus 2. Well that is x plus 2 x minus 1 and our super, the numerator of our super denominator is 2 times x plus 2. Now we're going to multiply by the reciprocal. We're doing the same process, it's just a few more steps. So I take my supernumerator, x plus 2 times x minus 1 over x times x plus 1, and I'm going to multiply that by the reciprocal of the denominator. So that is x plus 1, x minus 1, over 2 times x plus 2. Now going through and setting up my restrictions, or factoring, I have an x plus 1 in both numerator and denominator once these are multiplied. I also have an x plus 2 in both locations. So those will factor away to be a value of 1. We now have x minus 1 squared over 2x. Restrictions. Anything that made any denominator 0. So if x was 0, if x was negative 1, If x was 1, so that makes that positive or negative 1, and I believe that is everything. If x was any of these values, 0, positive 1, or negative 1, it would have made our original equal to an undefined value. So here is that simplified form. Simplification of complex fractions takes practice and time. Make sure that you understand the process that was going on here. It is long. It is not overly complex. We're simply repeating the same process again and again. So make sure you're ready to use this because next up is solving equations involving rational components.